Hey guys, and welcome back to Wasteland 2. We recently arrived in this town. I'm kind of going a clockwise motion around it, because we started at the bottom. And we found this huge area where they're growing not-so-edible plants. It's some sort of weird half-baked attempt to create tequila. I'm still finishing and filling in the map and exploring this area, but we've done a, we've actually kind of filled in that one quest with, like, the badgers already. But now, I'm just kind of looping my way around here. My goal is to fill the thing in and then start working on the primary objective, which is liberating this area of the shitty... All these shitty people are taking it over, these raiders that were attacking, they were taken in as protection and... Thought, oh well, I guess this place is ours now. No big deal. By Limbo Town standards, this is a mansion. It's made of sturdy stone and wood. It doesn't lean or sag, and it has a fresh coat of paint. It's also twice as big as its neighbors. Whoever lives here must be doing pretty well. Look at all them animals over there. Easy, old girl. What the hell, Dante? That was our best rug. I'll get another rug. Old Emmy's life was at stake. She nearly didn't. Life! Life! I have a life! That's a fucking possum! It's our fucking house! Come on, Beatrice. You knew I was a farmer when you married me, and a farmer has to run the farm. If you knew- or if you were a rich far- I, uh, I knew you were a rich farmer. Beatrice, please, I- Save it for the possums, limp dick. Aw, oh, see? They look they look like you. Maybe you and Virgil can have reason together. I'm out of here. Beatrice, come back! I feel so rushed to try to read those things because I know they're- they're not- You don't press X to continue for some reason. I'm sorry I had to see that, strangers. So they had a breakup, I guess. I also- I, ca I just called those- uh, those badgers earlier when they're possums. Whoops. Hello, Dante. Okay, listen. I know everybody's worried about the sickness that's going around, but please, please, don't call it a plague. It's bad for morale. Thanks. A lean-jawed, wind-etched older man in a cowboy hat and work clothes. He is covered in the dirt of honest work. What can I do for you? Dante Goodman's my name. The lady who left is my wife, Beatrice. She, well... I suppose she had the right to be mad, but farm ways die hard in an old farmer. Looks like farming has paid off for you. It's my life's work, and it's been good to me. Though I'm not liking it so much now. Should have made the deal with the leather jerks. You don't care for the leather jerks? Or sh oh, shouldn't have made the deal. Why the mayor even thought hiring such men was a good idea, I'll never know. Bunch of thieving hoodlums. And that dangler's the worst of the lot. The deal I made with him is the dumbest thing I ever done. Wish somebody would do something about him. You haven't done anything? If I'd done anything, you mean risking my life and the lives of other farmers? I... I ain't got the, had the courage. Uh, too many people been hurt already. But maybe I got something lying around that might help you do what you do best. Tell you what. You get my wife away from these jerks and out of danger, I'll give it to you. I call it the Heyman Hot Potato. What's the Heyman Hot Potato? It's a magnesium-infused shaped... Uh, char a shaped charge left over from when we enlarged the crater. Named it after its, la its late inventor. Thing will blow up through buildings, rock, solid steel, anything. You could blast into the tower stronghold with it. Hell, you could melt through the walls of Gecko's safe if you wanted to. You get Be Beatrice to safety and it's yours. Any suggestion where we could put her? Tell you what. I've got a tool shed on my farm. You tell Beatrice I'm finally going to show her where all my fortunes hid and bring her there. I'll keep her put I'll keep her put and give you the hot potato. You can do what you want with the leather jerks and she'll be safe and sound. What happened between Dangler and your wife? That's what I'd like to know. Seems uh, she's with him more than she's with me these days. She says she is negotiating a better deal, but for who? Yeah, she, she seems like she might be a gold digger that is not really in having your best interest at hearts. I'm surprised you're trying to stick with her at all. Tell me more about Dangler. I shook his hand once, made sure I had all the fingers when I was done. Should have done the same thing when I introduced him to my wife. What do you think of Mayor Von Grass? 
I thought he was a bad mayor. Then these leather jerks came along and showed me what bad, uh, what bad could be. Poor Sam. What's your deal with Dengler? They offered me a fortune to stop growing anything but agave, so they could turn into into liquor. That's how they spell liquor here. All right. Same deal they offered all the farmers. I didn't want to do it, but Beatrice said that it would make us, us rich. I wanted to make her happy, so... Well, now I'm regretting it. With everybody growing booze... Well, with everybody growing booze... Makings, uh, for the jerks... Nobody's grown anything to eat. People are starving, getting sick. And none of us seen any money, either. Dengler tells us it's all deposited in our accounts at the bank, but nobody can get any money out of there, just bullets. And damn few of them. Tell us about the bank. That no good gecko started kissing Dengler's behind the minute we came to town. I think they're in cahoots. Aiming to milk R Rodia like a possum, I swear. If we can get these people to uh, join the rangers, potentially, by saving everybody and liberating them, if they pledge their loyalty, they might actually be a really huge cash for ammo since they've been using that as their currency. <clears throat> and once we get rid of these creepy people that are taking over, they probably won't think that way anymore, but they'll have a whole lot of bullets that maybe they could supply us with. What sickness are you talking about? No clue what it is, but it's a plague upon our fair city. And our farmers in particular. Don't know why it's picking on the working folks. Doesn't seem fair. Well, I know why. It's because it's in that sewer over there, because I touched it and got sick. But I'm, for some reason, I can't just tell the scientists that immediately. Like, my, I guess my characters are too stupid to realize what's going on. Your wife is, ah, very expensive. Oh, expressive. Ah, uh, she is just a little high-strung sometimes. But I love her anyway. If you see her, tell her to come home. Her name's Dante. They said I'm named after a guy who went through hell to get the woman he loved. Maybe I did it backwards. Because he, he got the woman and then went to hell, apparently. So you breed possums? Yeah, I'm told that before the war, they are much smaller and considered pests. Now they're our best livestock. We raise them for the milk and the meat. Tasty any way you slice them, that's for sure. Possum meat, uh, I'll take your word for it. We heard you might take some, uh, have some cat litter you could spare. Cat litter? You have cats? Great little creatures, aren't they? Catch mice and rats, and they're cute, too. Well, I got some litter, sure, but it's hard to come by these days. If you wanted some, I think I'd have to, to ask a favor in return. What kind of favor? Well, now... Or, well, now. I got my own business, but this plague that's sweeping through Rhodia just hurts my soul. I love this town, and I can't stand, stand to watch it die, so if you help Dr. Horchata find a cure for the plague, I'll give you some of my litter stash. Okay. So, if I get a microscope to Horchata, I get cat litter. And then if I then help finish off the plague, I get more cat litter, basically. What do you think of Dr. Horchata? Horchata's a good man. I don't care that the man swears and spits, or has an eye as big as the harvest moon. He fixes people up right enough, and that's all that matters. See you soon. Alright, we have another person that's that's here to help us, basically. Haven't convinced Beatrice to come back, have you? P th this game has the same issues that, uh... It's funny playing this game in parallel with Fallout, because they have the same point of origin, ultimately. They both have the same problem where NPCs just shout lines at you for no reason, where the context doesn't make sense. In, in that game's case, it's people just shout the same thing over and over again, and it often contradicts the situation around you. And in this game, they keep saying stuff like, You haven't finished that yet? Like, like it's like you're coming back for the first time in like three hours, when it's really like, I literally was talking to you just now, and just stopped talking to you, and now you're like, chastising me for not being done yet. I'm like, I literally haven't taken a step yet. What's your issue? What's back here? None shall pass, says Distillery Guard. Where's Distillery Guard? Oh, those are mines. Okay. Somewhat, there's some, somewhere there's a guard that doesn't want me to pass, and there's mines, so... I'm going to just go ahead and... I'm just quick saving in case this gets bad for me or something. Let's see here. Work on, dis, on taking a few of these apart. That looks oddly like something might be stashed back here. Guess I'll find out. Be real careful here. 
These kind of moments are really repetitive and maybe even a little tedious, but it's also kind of satisfying to have a moment where like three different characters can work together. Because there's one character that can detect bombs, one character that can disarm bombs, and one character that's currently equipped to dig up these kinds of holes. That's kind of a nice combo. And it is... ooh, more ammo for the sniper rifle I have. Pinky finger. Not too fresh and not too old. There are no answers here, only questions. That is probably a reference that I don't know. But it's probably a reference. Oh, that's the boundary of the world, apparently. Yeah, can't go any further that way. So it really is just this tiny cutout with a little bit of a of treasure back here. Can I go that way? Oh, I can. The loading dock doors are locked. The main guard is uh, the door is guarded by a leather jerk. Can I go back here? Oh, I can just keep going over here. Is there a wall over here? There's the boundary. Taking a little slow in case I walk into something. Oh, there's a safe. Looks like it's... I can't quite tell, but it looks like it might be deep, like underground compared to where I am. Is that a big building? Looks like it might be. Let's move the screen so I can see. Oh yeah, that's a, that is a big building. I couldn't quite make it out at first because there were so many... Uh, the name was in the way. <laughs> or Gus. Oh, can't walk this way. <clears throat> We're turning back then. Somewhere around here there's a distillery guard that's not happy to see me. There you are. None shall pass. None shall pass. What if I talk to you? This guy keeps sipping from a flask he keeps in his jacket. No entry without orders from Lieutenant Dangler, sorry. But we have orders from Lieutenant Dangler. Oh, well. Go on then, then. I can just walk in? I had no idea alcohol was made in such large quantities. Is it an important part of normal life? Maybe? They'll kill me if they see me talking. Okay, I'll admit this this is the first episode of a new session. When did I when did I get those orders? I'm blanking a little bit here. Oh look, prisoners probably. I don't remember getting those orders, frankly. Let's work on the- let's t take care of the bomb problem. Maybe the doctor gave me some kind of falsified orders. Or maybe... Maybe it was, uh... Pistol- Pistol Joe? Pistol... Pistol Pete. Maybe he- maybe as part of sending me here, he gave me false orders. I don't... Actually remember what, where I got the orders from. Chris's notebook. That might be a sin. Oh, shut up. A well-worn notebook with Christopher Van Grass written on the cover, but otherwise blank. Guess Chris, guess Chris didn't have much to say. Strangely, however, the corners of pages 2, 3, 6, and 9 have been folded over. Like he was marking his place, even though nothing is written on them. 2, 3, 6, 9. That's gonna be a, passport, a pass, uh, password, probably. Mutant Kangaroo Paw. Bonus to Outdoorsman, but mine is out at Animal Whisperer. Though you've never seen a real kangaroo, you can tell this mother you can tell the motherfucker this paw came from off of that it, it, that must have been really nasty. Kangaroos aren't too bad, are they? Sewer key. Hey. That'll get us access to that sewer. Was it uh 2369 I think it was? I should have really m repeated that a few more times to myself to try to remember it. They must love each other very much. Who are they? Very often. <laughs> Oh. Sitting in the bed with his with his arm around a leathery jerkhead is a paunchy young man who bears a striking resemblance to Mayor Von Grass. He looks at you with bloodshot eyes. Wait, is that the real mayor? I thought the mayor was in the cage back there. Let's see what happens here. I'm busy here. What exactly are you busy doing? Quality control. What the fuck does it look like? This place doesn't fucking run without me. I'm the only one who knows the fucking recipe for hard-boiled tequila. I'm the only one who knows what it's supposed to fucking taste like. I'm the fucking key to the whole fucking town. You sure say fuck a lot. That's because I'm the king of fuck. I fuck like a fucking god. Huh? Did you speak, bitch? 
What the fuck was that? <sighs> Nothing, honey. I just sneezed. You're the best lover I've ever had, honest. You better fucking believe it. What's the recipe? Ha! <laughs> you fuckers think I'm telling you? I ain't fucking stupid. The only reason I'm still alive is because I know it and nobody else does. That fucking recipe only exists in two places. In my head and in my safe deposit box in the bank. And nobody's getting either. It's worth too fucking much. If it's the only reason you're alive, why would you have it written down anywhere if you have it in your head? That seems like a terrible idea, because I'm going to steal it now. How secure is your safe deposit box? You think you can fucking trick me, fucker? There is no point. First, you'd have to get into the vault at the bank, and that's impossible. Then, you'd have to know the combination to my safe deposit box, and ain't nobody ever finding that fucker. I already know it. Whatever, we gotta go. Yeah, yeah, beat it. I've got some fucking to do. Man, they just have the most talented voice actors for this game. He has lost his way. Uh... Machines have souls, do you think? Don't. Stop. Stop. Don't. No, we're not talking about electric sheep over here. These bottles are over 100 years old, but it looks like they've been cleaned thoroughly, and new labels have been stuck over the scratched and cloudy plastic. They read distilled water. Ooh, we got an empty water bottle. How exciting. Alright. Whoa. Um. Huge, fiercely bearded and, and dressed head to toe instead of leather except for the jaunty Greek fisherman's cap perched on a shaven head. The leather jerk looks like the villain of an old-fashioned cartoon. He's got one thing going for him, at least. He's the only jerk in the building who isn't completely shit-faced. Halt! Who goes there? You're not allowed in here. Dangler's orders. Leave immediately. Uh, sweet kiss ass. Sorry, the rangers are looking to buy a few barrels of tequila for HQ. This isn't the right place. Your buyers? Damn. My mistake. Please have a look around, sample some tequila. But for your own safety, don't bother the workers or the guards. And stay in the main room. Everything else is off limits. Thanks. And how is the tequila? They tell me it's the finest booze in the LA wetlands, but I wouldn't know I don't drink. That's why Dangler gave me the job. He needed somebody sober to watch all these dipsos. If you don't drink booze, what do you drink? The distillery also bottles distilled water. I drink that. With the heat in here, I have to. I carry a bottle of it at all times. Delicious. Interesting. Then go. So, I get that tranquilizer or whatever we found, put it in the distilled water, give him the distilled water, and he gets knocked out, and then we have the ability to go into the side rooms to not have to deal with, with him anymore. There's the empty water bottle. Did I not get any actual distilled water? I guess I, oh yeah, I probably have to get it from something else. Um, prayer, tripes, umbrella. This game gets a little, this is not the best way to organize items in a way to be able to navigate through them and figure out where your items are, unfortunately. It's umbrella based guitar, condom. Chloral hydrate, this stuff will knock out anyone who drinks it, all right? Maybe I should just put those on somebody who I'm gonna... Here, I'm gonna put both those items together. Chloral Hydrate. Actually, let's give it to... Yeah, we'll give it to this, this guy over here. Because he has a relatively unpopulated inventory. Keep those two things together so I can be able to find them easier. There we go. Chlo Arbed Water Bottle. Chloral Hydrate. No ability to use either of them, right? Use? What? What am I going to do? Use an empty water bottle on somebody? No. Um, there must be a... Oh. There it is. Use empty water bottle. Uh, the look of this place does not inspire poetry. The still doesn't smell like the others. Oh, this still doesn't smell like the others. It just smells like boiling water. A clear liquid drips from its spout. You taste it. Distilled water. Alright. Let's fill up the bottle then. Yay, water. 
I'm gonna drug this water, unless that's not actually why you do the thing that you're talking about. But it just seems like a thing to do. Alright. You are a butter waddle. A uh, bottle filled with the finest Rodania water. Use? No, I'm trying to, I would like to use it on the item I have. This level knock out anyone who drinks it. Yep, that's the plan. How do I... How do you combine items in this game? I'm trying to use adventure game logic and I don't see how. Huh. I may have to look up whether or not that's even a thing you can do, but for now... We'll just wander around for a bit. This is the type of situation where I could screw something by clicking up the wrong... Clicking on the wrong things, I'm just kind of be, trying to be careful a little bit. This is the most sophisticated still you've ever seen, a marvel of modern hooch-making technology. The fire beneath is is uh, turning the room into a furnace. I probably should finish uh, exploring the town before I go too far into trying to do something crazy around here. Hello. Where's that lead to? Just right back outside? Uh, doesn't open right now? Hmm. That's a low chance of success with lockpicking, is what that is. Why um, do people call alcohol spirits? Is there something supernatural about it? No, not no success this time, but no no failure yet. It's probably just an alternate way into this room, but I just feel like opening it. Seems like it might be a handy path to have. Oh, no critical failure yet. Leave it to the expert, she says. Oh, come on, man. One of these days. I think I'm gonna look into the, uh, the hydrate to see if I can do what I'm thinking of doing in a moment. But I, th I think I'll do the between episodes, since we're coming up on the tail end of this one. But I'll, I'll just keep exploring for now. I'm, so, I'm blown away that I haven't failed or succeeded yet. Wow. This is statistically improbable, I'd say. Oh, there's the critical failure I was waiting for. That is not a high chance of repairing, either. Although I don't- I can't critically fail at repairing. If I were to mod this game at all, I would definitely reduce the time it takes to do this. <laughs> Man, that- that sweet loading screen. Watching that icon slowly fill. I might give up just out of impatience. <laughs> so where exactly does this lead? It's a little hard to tell. Side yard of some kind? Is there, even a, is there actually a reason to do this or am I wasting my time? I, get, I got in like around here, right? This may be a total waste of my time. There's no fence. Okay, I'm sorry everyone. I don't think there's actually a reason for me to do that. Oops, camera. There we go. I think that was actually a, uh... Anything else around here? We'll look, at, we'll look into what to do back there. But, uh, so we have a few things to deal with here. Uh, we, we want to get the, uh, d the, uh, recipe from the bank. I have the code, but I need to weigh in. And I probably want to, I probably want to drug that character. Or someone, at some point. Just because I have those uh, items together. Yeah, there was no reason for me to open that. That was an alternate way in if you're trying to sneak in because you don't have orders. I do. I'm gonna. Uh, while, while I'm looking up the water thing, I'll definitely look up where the orders came from to see if I just got them and forgot. So I can, like, run all the way around this building. Is there anything back here? No, not necessarily. I'm definitely coming up on being done exploring soon. I think the main thing is just the central area with that, uh, casino. Yep. We filled in a lot of the map. It's kind of funny that every time you go to a new location in this game, you can spend... ...like a solid hour just trying to explore the area and see what's around. If I find more mines, I'm gonna start getting alarmed by how many mines these people just live around all the time. Nope. I think that was just a isolated stash, perhaps. I had to try. Uh, for a second there, I thought I could actually grab that through the wall. I'm like, is that gonna work? 
I'm gonna grab the crap out of whatever that is. All right, so most of the, they give they give me a false expectation because the first backyard I went to had stuff in it, but all the other ones don't. This is the finest house in Rodia, though that's not saying much. It's reasonably well maintained in the wake of the jerk's takeover. The person who lives here clearly must have some money or power or both. Didn't we just call the other place like a mansion? And now you're like, this is the finest house here. No, this is. No, this is. One second, amigos. These jerks look proud to be at their posts. This is the boss's house. What do you want here? I heard there was work available. Alright, go in. But talk to L Lieutenant Dengler. Boss O'Biggin is, is uh, much too busy to talk to Lexi Yu. Uh, I, should I might as well hear the Leather Jerks imp uh, impression of who these people are. So who's Dengler? The Lieutenant runs the day-to-day -day business of the Jerks. O'Biggin's too big a man to sweat the small stuff. And who's O'Biggin? Don't... <clears throat> Don't even try to talk to Boss Obigan. He's got no time for small fry. Adios, and don't try anything in there. I don't want to have to clean your blood out of the rug later. Man, if you want an easy way to liberate this place of the bad guys, I bet shooting them in the face right now would not be a totally unreasonable thing to do. Unless it's just super difficult in there, which is possible. What's What are things like in here? I'm surprised they don't take our guns away at all. So who are you? Oh, this goes on for a while, huh? Uh, as you enter the house, you see a bent old woman cleaning the hall. She gives you a cool once-over, then glances into the side room and steps to you. The interior is a staid, as staid and solid as the exterior. At least it was. Now empty bottles, possum bones, and dirty clothes are strewn across the tasteful carpets, and someone's punched holes in many of the paintings. A drunk leather jerk snores on the couch. More uh, play cards at the table of the main room. Others start a TV with a broken screen. May, so is the old woman. A bent old woman cleaning the hall. You ain't no jerks. Don't look dumb enough. What are you here for then? We're here to help Rodia. Glad to hear you say it. I miss the mayor ever so much. If you was to get rid of those these rascals and bring them back safe, I'd, well... I ain't got much. I might be able to point y'all to something nice. And I just might be able to help y'all out too. How can you help? Well now, if you peek around through the door over there, you'll see all of Dengi's boys hanging out, uh, hanging out in the parlor, putting their feet in the furniture and throwing chicken bones in the fireplace. But being as I'm the housekeeper, I got the keys to the door. I could lock them in. Then they wouldn't be able to see, wouldn't be able to come running if Dengi was to maybe call for help for some reason, you see? I can't say them boys would stay locked up, up for long, so you best be ready to do something to old Dengi after I lock the door. Just give me the sign when you are. Wow. So yeah, just as, just as I was figuring, this is one of your chances to take them out. If you lock the door, then you can take out their leaders, and who knows at that point if you have to fight all of them or not. But, uh, it's one solution for the leaders, but... I think there's other stuff I should look at. I should probably take a look around and see if, what other options I might have around here. Among other things, that one guy said to take it. He wanted to keep make his wife go somewhere safe. Uh, how nice we talking for the reward? Let's just say I heard some of these here jerks talking about some cargo they buried in the in an inter intersection north of town. Nothing an old lady like me could use, let alone dig up. Too dangerous out there. But you folks, could, but folks like you. Wouldn't be no problem at all. You don't think much of the leather jerks? Oh, you bring the mayor back to me and kick these fools out of my house. I'll give you the name of the cross street. Cross my heart. You don't think much of the leather jerks? They live up to their name. That's for damn sure. Breaking the plates, leaving their mess everywhere, killing folks in the backyard. Ain't civilized. Why, I've been Mayor Von Grass's housekeeper for 20 years, and I never had to clean up no dead bodies. Makes me sick. Stay safe now. Yeah, that's definitely an option to keep in mind. And it's fairly li for letting us into your home. It's fairly likely I'll do it. My home, you crazy girl. Oh, no. I'm just a mutant. I'm just a mutant, meaning like subhuman? Is that what you're implying? Who are y'all? I 
Oh, they're just leather jerks? Okay. What's going on in here? You got y'all regular? Oh, these are all just leather jerks, aren't they? No! Did not mean to loot that. You're gonna get me in trouble, X button. I'm just taking a look around. Gotta calm your titties. Alright. Is that them? Nope, those are leather jerks too. They're all over the place. These must be the big bosses. Alright. Gonna meet some new people here. Um... A grand bedroom now trashed by the habits of leather jerks. The four-poster bed is caved in and bloody. The walls have been defaced with graffiti, and there is food, trash, and flies everywhere. Jerks are stationed around the walls. Writing at a writing desk is a... Uh, writing at a writing desk is a short jerk in red leather. He has a smirking, impish face and unruly red hair. Eating at a card table behind him is the biggest jerk you've ever seen. It must have taken three cows to wrap that gigantic, blubbery body in leather. And his jacket is still bust, uh, bursting at the steams. No wonder. He's shoving gobbets of possum steak into his mouth with both hands. So he just freaks out and just chows down all the time? Oh yeah, I can tell which one's which. One of them's doing smart stuff, and the other one's just feasting. And then there's two generics around. Alright. Ah, the strangers I've been hearing so much about. Strangers? Can we eat the strangers, Dengi? No, you idiot. We'll not eat the strangers. Yet. Okay, Dengi. Holy shit. Oh, Biggin's the leader around here? And he is the most simple of simpletons. Wow. Do they fall for that? Cross a punk rocker and a leprechaun, this is what you get. You look smarter than your average jerk, and more ambitious than the townsfolk of Rodia. Those are qualities I could use. Unless, of course, you think what we're doing here is wrong. I could say that what they're doing is wrong. That seems like it would end poorly for me, too. Let's see. What do you think about the townsfolk? They are the sheep, and we are the wolves. It's the natural order of things. What do you think about Rodia? This town was as open as a hooker's legs before we saved it from the synths. All were welcome. Nobody was turned away. No tariff to get in. All the policies of that ridiculously idealistic mayor who believed that sharing Rodia's wondrous bounty would bring civilization back to Los Angeles. Absurd. Making people pay through the nose for Rodia's wondrous bounty will bring civilization back to Los Angeles. That's how the world works. What about the mayor? If you don't know enough to get out of the way of progress, progress will run you over. <laughs> or perhaps hang you from a tower for everyone to see what happens when you impede progress. Now he can see the casino I made of his tavern, the distillery I made of his backyard still, the money-making machine I made out of his bank. The bank? The intricacies of high finance are <laughs> no doubt beyond you, but I'm very pleased with what we've done with the bank. Mr. Gecko has been a helpful and judicious partner in this enterprise. Alright, so what's up with that distillery back there? The opportunity with the most potential in this dreary little town, and its owner, the mayor and his lazy son, did nothing with it. I don't think they produced 20 barrels of booze in a year. I'm working on producing 20 barrels in a week. We'll be rich. Of course, it would be easier if I didn't have to deal with either of them. Alright, 20 barrels a week is ambitious, but how are you supposed to actually get all of that to go around, is what I'm wondering. What do you think about the casino? A hundred percent profit. It's not so much a casino as a green felt abattoir. And for those who like a different sort of game, there are hookers in the back. The hookers? Another profitable scheme. 
The townsfolk spend both bullets and seed on my harlots, leaving them weaker in spirit as well as defense. The towers? People talk about the beauty of those towers. Uh, I don't see it. But they're very useful for making an example of someone. You were dealing with synths. No idea what their deal is. But I'm glad they were giving Rodia a hard time. It gave us the opportunity we were looking for. Who are you calling a jerk? I meant no insult. I'm a jerk myself. A leather jerk. Though I didn't start out that way. They captured me in the mountains of Glendale. They were going to skin me and eat me, I believe. But my will was greater than theirs. I talked them out of it. Then led them out of the hills with promises of gold and women. And leather jackets beyond their wildest dreams. <laughs> Since then... They've been mine to command. Oh, so this this guy that eats all the time legitimately was their leader, but he's just so stupid that this guy's just kind of taken over. Your will. It is a mistake to think that muscle alone wins in this world. Any one of my three best men, Biggin, the Greek, or Pat the Axe, could kill me with a pinch of their fingers. But, as the great warlord Gandhi once said, Strength does not come from physical capacity, it comes from an indomitable will. I live that motto every day. I die if I forget it. I'm sitting here thinking, like, I wonder if I'm supposed to use that tranquilizer, or whatever, it's the chlorate something. Um, I wonder if I'm supposed to use that on the big eating guy. It's clearly a point of weakness, it may be a more obvious thing than dealing with the... trying to spike that guy's water. Who's Pat the Axe? The Axe may be dumber than Biggin. It's an open question. But he's a berserker in battle, and easily kept in line with drink and whores. Just don't touch his axe. More precious to him than his manhood, it would seem. The Greek? He oversees operations at the distillery. Fairly smart, for a walking bicep. But a brutal man, and his private life does not bear examining. All I care about is that he's steady and loyal and doesn't drink. And he can kill a dozen men without breaking a sweat. Alright, so the Greek is the guy we met in the distillery. Uh, might as well ask him about the cat litter. Cat litter? Oh, of course. You're impatient to get to Hollywood before the winter winds clear the radiation belt. Well, how you spend your free time is your concern, but we have no cat litter. You're welcome to what you find in town, but I don't know of any. Perhaps the ugly doctor. Interesting. That might be the first we've heard about the idea that the, the radiation belt that we're currently trying to get past actually is seasonal. What do you think of Dante? The richest and most influential of the farmers that work the crater. A stubborn man, but I'm working on him. He'll come around in the end. Alright. Oh yeah, the crater? Do you know... That before we took over, 90% of that farmland in that crater was devoted to fruits, vegetables, and grazing land for possums? What a waste. Now, 99% is devoted to agave plants, all of which goes directly into the distillery to be turned into booze. And from there, into money in the bank. So much untapped potential in those fields. What were the farmers thinking, trying to grow food that they could use to survive? I feel like I shouldn't mention Beatrice, or Dante wanting her back, or make a judgment here. Because I'm not done finishing in the, uh, filling in the map yet. And these might... any of these things I could see sparking a confrontation. Well, saying that he's not wrong would not spark confrontation, I'm sure, but that's uh, not really my goal. But I might confront him and say he's wrong at some point. Or... <clears throat> Sorry, weird hiccup moment. <laughs> First I should try to fill in the map though, and find Beatrice to get them clear and so on before I, I initiate any conflicts here. Thanks for dropping in. Bye now. He's cordial enough. Hey, I, I just saw these guys over at Dante's. Did you, my dear? Good to know. Well, they were just leaving. 
Well, Beatrice is being problematic, isn't she? Huh, it looks like Beatrice is here to stay. She's over in the corner checking herself out in the mirror. Maybe we should give her a shot? Denji, don't like me talking to strangers. Okay, she seems pretty insufferable to, to me. What do you think of this one, Denji? Big hmm? like possibly. Oh, it's, uh, it's fine, babe. Fine. Oh, big gun, like the no clothes on one, best. All right, now she's talking. Now you're getting talked about like that, lady. Have fun. The blinding light of intelligence does not blaze from this man's eyes, not even a glimmer. Big gun is eating. What you want? Um. Bye. Bye. He's a fat simpleton. All right. We'll figure out what to do next, but thanks. I think I'm going to go ahead and cut it here, guys. So thanks for watching, like always. Made a decent little chunk here of progress. A lot of dialogue and interactions here, but we found two more buildings that have major implications for the story here, I think. I'll fill in this little chunk in the middle next, and we'll start taking actions that could shape the lives of a bunch of people real soon. Thanks for watching, like always, guys. I'll see you next time.